getting ready for our Meet Me Monday Bible study. And so I encourage you to come on in. We're going to jump into the Word shortly. Oh God, that's what's been ringing in my spirit last evening, even on today, already this morning. Just, oh God, oh God, God of mercy, God of light, God of truth. Oh God, somebody say that with me right there in your own home. Oh God, <laughs> have you ever had situations and things in your life and you didn't even really know all of the words to say, all of the, the, um, I guess, utterances to even put into the atmosphere. And the only thing sufficient is, oh God, <laughs> oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. So I welcome you to just put his name out there in your own atmosphere as we're joining tonight, just making sure I'm well. Good morning to those of you who are joining me. Good morning to those of you who will watch us on the replay. Good morning, uh, Darkest. Good to see you, sis. Good morning. We'll go ahead and tag a few queens. Make sure they're up. I'm going to tag some. Um, and then we're going to jump right into the word and make the most of our time on this morning. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Matchless King, the great I am. Oh, God. Oh, God. Good morning, Dalia. Good to see you. Good morning, Mary. Good to see you, my friend. Oh God, like I feel the heaviness of him on this morning. Oh God, and may the heaviness of him sit in your circumstances and sit in your situations. Oh God, oh God, good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Queens. Go ahead and tag another queen. You can say good morning to another queen and right with that, we're going to just get ready to delve in. And I've just been saying this morning, oh God, like Sister Mary, when we don't know what else to say, you know, when you don't really know what else to say, um, to really, to really, good morning, good morning, Thea in Florida. Y'all, we got Florida, Texas, and Georgia on the line this morning. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. Oh God, friend. I put his, 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 his name in our atmospheres on this morning. Oh God. Oh God, and as we're saying that, I'm inviting you to think about situations that you are trying to navigate, things that you know, oh God, oh but God, like God, I need you to do it, whether it is whether it is a difficult thing, good morning, Dia, whether it is a difficult thing or it's a, a hard thing or it's even a joyous thing, but in your heart, you know, but that God, oh God, but that God do it, you already know, like, like, man, if I could do that, Queen, if I could fix it, if Gina could do it, if Dia could do it, if Jen could do it, it would be done by now. So because it has not happened yet, Kim, because we need it to be made manifest, all I got for it this morning is, oh, God, like, oh, God, be who you are. Oh, God. So somebody say that right in your own homes on today, right in the situations that you're facing. Don't... um push away from those situations. Y'all know how sometimes things can feel so overwhelming. You really don't want to, um, you don't even want to think about it. But on this morning, I invite you, let it sit with you. Let it, let it come on into your emotions, darkest. Let it come on into your mind, Kim. Deal whatever it is that you're trying to envision. Jen, whatever it is that you have to, have to um, um, solve, whatever it is that you have to push through. Um, my dear friend, Dr. Thea, whatever it is that you're facing, I invite you not to shy away from it this morning, but to allow your full heart, your full emotions, your full spirit to wrap around it and you invite into it, Dalia. Oh God. <laughs> Y'all, he doesn't even need a whole lot of words. We don't have to we don't have to um um holler loud and talk at him for the god hears us right so we're just saying oh god oh god somebody say it again with me oh god whatever it is if it's your children whatever it is oh god oh god oh my god my god my god and then listening y'all because we're talking about being aligned and being in the season of his still small voice oh god speak because we're listening because we're laying in and we're listening so i'm going to jump right into this in the interest of time not going to try to hold y'all all morning because i know you're busy so sarah even if you're getting dressed getting ready to go out or or, or look or easing into your monday morning however that looks for each of you good morning queens good morning daddy god Oh God, be with us. So as I teach this morning, I want to share something that's been sitting with my heart and my girlfriend Kim 
from the womb girlfriend and kind of sort of she's younger than me so kind of from the womb but by the time she got here definitely from the womb right so i want to share something that we've kind of been chatting out and all of it is still in a line with alignment so you all listen to me for this because i uh delia because i often believe whatever i'm journeying through i'm in here with you sometimes i'm teaching from a place of victory and other times i'm teaching from a place of it's me and you we're in this together so one of the things that the lord has really been dealing with me about out. It's alignment, like being in lockstep deal with where he's going, with what he's up to, learning how to listen in underneath the noise. So I'm going to make this um, this an analogy for you or this illustration. Now, many of you are mothers or your grandmothers. Um, I see you, Jen. Oh, God, in your fears. Amen. I invite others of you um, as you're personalizing this, oh, God, to put it in the circumstance where you need it. Oh, God, in my finances. Oh, God, in my listening. Oh, God, in my fear. Oh, God, with my children. Oh, God, like wherever that applies for you as I speak. Um, and so and so what God has really been dealing with me about is um, this illustration that I will share. So many of you are mothers and grandmothers are adults who interact with children. And y'all know how things can be very loud. They can be very loud in the house or very loud in the squirmish between your kids, very loud in a scenario, right? And for a moment, like you may find yourself getting loud too. You may find yourself raising your voice, elevating your voice, getting with them. But I'm telling y'all, and as sure as my mom's name is Gonzola Jerkins, she could do all of that with eight children. But when my mom said in this quiet, stoic, Gina Lynette, Gina Lynette, I understood that something had shifted in her dynamic, in her engagement. When mama would do all that, y'all sit down and, and Gina get over here and glow, go, da, da, da. But when she would say, listen, and that voice would go to a more firm tone deal. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That, that, your voice goes to that, okay. I mean what I'm about to say tone oftentimes that space is not a loud exuberant I, that space <laughs> when you really that space when you get down in a child's space and look them eye to eye and have a conversation you're not yelling at the top of your lungs you're you're speaking directly to them eye to eye in a much more measured tone because this right here that I'm about to tell you I mean it for the last time, for the last time, y'all know how when we, um, for us, Kim, we would be at church darkest running around and doing all this stuff. And our mamas, because we keep playing with each other, our mama say, y'all go get in that car. Y'all go get in that car. <laughs> Anybody else grew up like that? Uh, Sister Mary, your mama, whoever, go get in the car. Y'all come on, get in the car. And she's doing all of that, trying to round up all these people. But when your mama, hear, when you hear your mama say, not yelling no more, not nothing else no more, you just hear her say, if by the time I get to the car, you're not there, you're going to get left. You know, <laughs> things have changed. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And that's how I feel in this season of the world being loud, the world doing all sorts of things to get people attention and, and, and the like that God has leaned into us, y'all. Somebody say, God, lean into me. And y'all, I'm trying to lean back because I don't want to miss one word that he speaks as I have opportunity to I'll unfold more of some of the things he's he's had open up in my life because I'm trying to lean in to hear what he has to say. Literally leaning in like, God, I don't want to misstep. I'll share this transparently and then I'm going to jump right to the lesson because time just kind of, kind of rolls. Many of you knew that I made a decision last year to go back into the schools and I went into the schools with this agenda, this assignment, this, this perspective that as an educator who presents, um, during this moment of being in the pandemic, when people are wearing masks, when you're having students um, you know, on the virtual platform and in the classroom, and when you're trying to navigate safety and the like, as an educator who presents, who trains principals and leaders, I do not desire to get up and do professional developments. And I've never walked a day in their shoes. I don't, I don't know 
um, what it's like to experience that. So I'm out here trying to teach and to coach you, but I haven't been there. So I, I, I made a connection with the, with the principal in a former district of mine and said, can I come in under the radar and just be in the classrooms, be in the building, be with students and really get a sense of what that's like. Y'all, so I did that for a year, right? I knew that I heard God say that in everything within my professional background, my accomplishments, my titles, positions that I had served with fought against that because from the outside looking in, it would have looked like you're going backwards in your career. You, you've you been a building principal. How are you going to go and serve in a classroom as just a teacher? But I knew, Lorena, that I had leaned into the Lord and I knew what he was directing me to do. Now listen, I also knew when that assignment was over and I started telling like my girlfriend Kim, I'm not going back to that. I, I said one day I'm going to teach him. That was my one day, right? That's done. So yo, I was, I was uh, applying for things, things that were even under my, under my, under my um, qualifications and the like and could not get like even an interview for some of those positions, right? And um, then I, I, I remember going to a a uh, what is an orientation for another thing. I kid you not. I kid you not. I I was in that orientation. I came home and I got out a suitcase and I was getting ready to pack because it requires a bit of traveling. Y'all, I kid you not. My spirit had not settled. Y'all who are, are juggling through things right now and your spirit has not settled. Trust your spirit. Learn to give honor to your voice, to your inner spirit, to your inner man. I had the suitcase laying on my bed. My sister came over to visit and she would tell you that. That when I opened the door, I was in tears. And she said, gee, what's going on? And I have this one sister, honey. She'd be ready to go in. She's kind of like my girlfriend, Kim. She was ready to go in. Good morning, son. And I, I said, and she said, what's going on? Because I was teary. And, um, and, and I said, sis, those, some of you who know this, Lorraine probably remembers this. I have cooked, I have confessed for years. I will be paid to do what I was made to do. And I'll be able to share more details about that with you openly soon. But I'm telling you, y'all. I had the suitcase packed and ready to go and my spirit was not at rest, but I knew I needed to be in action because there's some things I want to accomplish. And I literally got a phone call asking me to interview for something that I, I, I would do just out of, out of just, I will be paid to do what I was made to do. God has opened that door for me and I will be able to share that with you all soon on what opportunity he has opened for me. But my suitcase was open, ready to go and take something else. But my spirit knew that's not my landing space. Some of you who watched the video from last week will know I shared with you how the Lord Dia literally gave me land. That's for somebody to receive today. A thing that I have been praying about and that I was trying to pay for. The Lord sent through my uncle and my aunt a message and directions and gave me land. Somebody received that today. The thing that you've been struggling for, striving for, working to get, God is going to open that door for you. Now for me, it looked like land. That's what I needed to expand the retreat center that I'm working on. Yours can be the manifestation of a building. Yours can be the manifestation of a connection. Yours can be the manifestation of a promotion. Yours can be the manifestation of a relationship. God is going to give you, somebody say, oh God. Huh. Oh God, God is going to give you the thing that you have been striving for because your voice is, your ear is leaning into the direction of that still small voice that will tell you, go here, say this, don't do that. Don't purchase now. Don't buy. Girl, I got you. Just hold on. Don't take that in. Uh, honey, shut that suitcase. Put that suitcase back up. You're not, it's not your pack. Like we want those types of huh. Oh God, we want those types of instructions, y'all, because I feel this urgency that says, I don't have time to waste and don't want to play. Does anybody feel that on this morning? Don't have time to waste and don't want to play. So lean in. So we are in the season. Y'all go ahead. I invited you last week to lay your hands on your own chest and say, we are in the season. I am in the season of my still small voice. And I don't want to miss one word of what he says. Not one word. So then here goes, here's what happens. I'm going to share this quickly and try to get a little bit into the text that we had. Uh, somebody say, we're just going to get to this. This is all we're going to talk about today. Aligned adversity. 
So those of you who take the notes and put them in there, aligned adversity, aligned acceptance. That's what God is talking to us about this morning. I wanted to go back down and continue our journey in Proverbs. I don't know that we'll quite get there. We'll see how that goes. But aligned adversity. Somebody put that? Aligned adversity. Y'all better listen to me on this. And I say this all the time about this Christian journey. We've got to start telling people the truth about this journey. That this journey is not always roses and butterflies, honey. That there are some really good points. I promise y'all, I'm going to teach you a series soon about pay to do what you was made to do. It's been in my spirit for years. I've taught it before and we'll revisit. And there are moments when that happens. But let me tell you about the journey. The other part of that. So somebody say with me, at aligned adversity. And then aligned acceptance. So what do I mean about that? In this season, somebody hear me. You are going to have dissonance. I know some of you are already feeling it. So when I put it out there, you just say me too. Already there, already get it. You are going to have dissonance. In inexplicable tensions and inexplicable shiftings, right? With relationships that are in your life. Some of these relationships are shifting and it will wound, hurt, break, cause your eyes to sweat and your heart to palpitate. In a season when God is shifting you, when God is moving you, you are going to experience dissonance, disconnects, disruptions, um, um, tensions in relationships. Some of which you have held dear and long and in position in your life for years. And you don't even know why there's an undercurrent in your spirit. Y'all know how we said something not sitting right. You are going to experience that when God begins to shift you. Somebody say aligned adversity. Aligned adversity. Now listen, I am not declaring that in your life. Listen, understand me because I'm careful about my words. I am not declaring that in your life. I am explaining to you what will already occur in your life. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Any of you already expecting, experiencing shiftings? Any of you, thank you, Sarah, for getting the notes for us. Any of you already experiencing uh, shiftings in dynamics and relationships, whether it's family, whether it's personal, whether it's ministry, whether it's employment, whether it's long-standing friendships, like any of you already kind of know, like, man, I, 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 I'm not responding. Like, and, and, and some of us know, honey, it ain't, it ain't all, it ain't it really all the people. It's me. I'm shifting. I'm different. Something's going on with me. And you know, though, that this is a part of your destiny. You already know that, that these shifts that you're having is a sign to you. So that's why I mean, I, what I mean about aligned adversity. And y'all, I've, I've moved my screen. Dia says she's already experiencing so that I can see and interact with you, okay? So if some way I fade because I'm not looking at myself because I want to really be seeing you and look at you eye to eye, I want you to understand this, Renee. I want y'all to get this. This at line adversity. God is doing these three things. And this is not the totality, but these three things are happening as we, as we lean into his voice. God is showing Get this, Sarah. He is strengthening and he is separating. This aligned adversity, that stuff that gets rough, that stuff that has tension, that stuff that makes me bump into stuff, it is because God is showing, God is strengthening, and God is separating. Listen, Sonia. Listen, Sonia. <laughs> Leaning into you, sis. Big sis. God is showing himself. God is showing himself mighty and he's showing himself strong. That's what God is desiring to do in your life. This aligned adversity, Dia, these moments, Dr. Thea, that are coming that feels difficult. God is showing himself. Somebody say, God, show me. God desires to show himself mighty and strong in your life. Many of us have often leaned on other people, our relationships, our connections, our, our dynamics with people, hoping that somehow those things will be the key to our open doors and our forward or momentum and God has somehow allowed that in some ways to be to be dormant to not have any effect because God is going to show himself mighty and strong in your adversity the word actually says that in your weakness that's where he shows strong 
So God actually has some allowed some adversity, some challenges, some tough points to occur in your life because he desires to show himself strong. He desires to show himself mighty in your life. He desires for you to see him move in ways that you can't move, in ways that other people cannot move in his life, in your life. Somebody said, then show me God. Show me God. So I want you not to be discouraged in these moments of adversity, but I actually want you to lean in the more. Lean in the more. Lean in the more, y'all. During this moment of adver adversity, when God is attempting to show himself mighty and strong in your life and ask God. Now, if it's me and I'm kind of I'm kind of cutthroat, I'm anxious to jump into the fight during this season of alignment, Father, when I'm leaning in, are you really wanting me to let you handle it? Are you showing me how to just uh, sit back and let the Lord fight my battles? Like, what are you trying to show me? Be aligned with that. If it's you who you normally, you don't speak up. You're not somebody who takes a stand. You find that you're more pra pa uh, passive aggressive. Are you internalized things? That can often be me. In this season, God, when I really do want to just sit back and let you fight my battles, I love holding my peace and letting you fight my battles. Is this the season when instead for me, you're showing yourself mighty and strong by giving me the strength to, to do what your word says. It says that every tongue that rises up against me, I have to condemn. See, this is the season, y'all, when we got to lean in. We have to align ourselves with his voice and really come to full grips with what is God trying to do when he shows himself. How is he showing himself? What's my navigation point? How is he causing me to grow? Because at the end of it, God is all about helping us become who he created us to be from the beginning of time. God is strengthening us, God. God is strengthening us. He's showing us. He is strengthening us, meaning he's, he's strengthening us to, to, to be stronger, to walk in greater wisdom, to navigate differently, than we, to own our voices in ways that we've never done before. There are some things that, like my girlfriend Yolanda says, that had you caught me a year ago, it would have broke me. But now she says, but it's too late. See, some of you recognize that in that adversity, that's when you found your backbone. You went from a wishbone to a backbone in the middle of your adversity. Somebody get that on today that you've gone from being spineless to having a backbone because you've gone through something. But this is how we, 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 we give honor to the struggle. It's when we stop pretending like we don't know better, when we stop pretending like we haven't learned things, when we stop playing it small, but we actually own that this that this strength that I have, it cost me something. Th these th this strength that I had, it cost me some tears during the night. It cost me some 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 separations. It cost me some anguish. It cost me some sacrifices. And what I'm not going to do is then now downplay this strength that I have to make somebody else feel comfortable. Oh God, that, hun, right, I have to stay right there because that's for somebody who's on the line today. Your struggle has caused you to be more wise. Your struggle has caused you to be more strengthened. But when you get in certain circumstances, you try to play it small. You try to act as if, as if you don't know what you know. And when you do that, you do a disservice to the struggle that you've already survived. You do a disservice. So yes, Kim, you've earned the right to walk like you got a backbone. You've earned the right to have a voice. You've earned the right to speak to say what you desire to say. You've been through something and God is showing you that you have strength. God is showing you that you, you that you, you may bend, but you really did not break. And so during this time of adversity, Lorena, don't play like you don't know what you really do know. Walk in the strength, Nigel. Walk in the boldness. Walk in the, 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 the fortitude of being a woman, Sharice, who paid the price to stand with our spine, right? Come on, I want to say, say it with your chest out. When you say it, say it with your chest out. Say it with, with, with some sense of, of assurity. Yesterday, I was talking to my girlfriend, Charlotte, and I would say a, a, a summary about something, but then I would say, Sarah, but I don't, I, I, I guess, I mean, I, I really don't know. And, and, and my friend corrected me in that moment, and she said, but you do know. Stop saying you don't know when you get through saying what you do know. 
Because it's your way of trying to act like this just may be my perception or this just may be my opinion or this just may be my thoughts. This is kind of, No, no, no. You said what you said. Don't add. I don't know. But I don't know behind it. Stand in it. Okay, so this adversity, Dr. Thea, it's aligned, y'all, because it is making us become who we were always destined to be. And then here's the last thing I'm going to say on that, because I said showing, it is strengthening, and it is separating. And y'all, y'all know what? I was going to say, this is my sister Gayla, who's on the, uh, who's on the line, as well as on my phone, but it's not her this time. She's going to get me for saying that. Listen, this is my last thing that I wanna, I'm going to say about that. It's separating, right? It's separating. Y'all, that is the hardest thing for me as a people person. Where's my big sis Renee? You still on here? There she goes. So listen here. Y'all, that separation piece is difficult, especially when you're an older sibling. That's my birth order. Especially when you are naturally wired to be pastoral, to be uh, a, 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 a group person. Most of you who know me, like even this was, we're struggling in the pandemic. We're about to have a Bible study. Oh, let's invite everybody. Like that's my natural wiring, right? And so that separating thing is 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 some is is difficult. Not sometimes difficult, uh, Sister Jackie. It is difficult for me. Here's what I want what want us to know though that some separation. It's aligned from the Lord, dear. Some separation and shifts is from the Lord. It, it is for where you are you are intended to go. It is for it, it is that separation is because many of us as women are natural nurturers. And honey, the Lord will be trying to call us into a certain place and we will be divvying up those blessings, trying to make sure that everybody got it. And so some separation is because of that. Other separation, uh, Renee, Kim, it's Jasmine. It's because God knows that if you stay in the situation that you're in, those people, that environment, that circumstance will never allow you to fully be who you're called to be. The, um, they'll never allow you to mature or grow into or walk in. Because this and this is why some of y'all are hurting. This is the why some people are hurting. It is not that you need to grow into. It's because you're already that size. You keep sticking that not that size nine into a size seven if you want to. You keep trying to put that size nine into a size seven. And what you will find yourself doing is complaining about the shoe. But the shoe is really not the issue. The shoe is not the issue. It's just that you've grown. And so that's what begins to happen. We stay in them size sevens and them size seven and a halves and get them coins on our foot and have to walk funny and take our shoes off and do all kinds of stuff. And then we start talking about the shoe and we complain about the shoe and we don't like the shoe. And then we cause ourselves, y'all, to take on that grumbling and that complaining and that irritated spirit and find God being displeased with us when the, and, 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 and even the situation is us. It's because we have grown, we have changed, we've matured, we've evolved, but we refuse to separate. Then we get mad at the stuff that we won't separate from. But that stuff is not the issue. It's you. You're the issue because you haven't, we, let me say we, because we haven't taken the, on the courage to really go out there. You, you, we want to become irritated because I'm over here being an administrative assistant and we're mad at the job because they're not paying us what we're worth. Well, listen, Sharice, if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm supposed to be a CEO of my own company, guess what? The administrative position job is not out of order for not paying me what I'm worth. An administrative position was never designed to pay an entrepreneur. An administrative assistant job was never designed to give the benefits of a CEO. So you're irritated because you're a CEO over here serving in an administrative position, but it's not the administrative position's fault that you won't step out and do what God has for you to do. You're over here irritated because you know that you're supposed to be teaching or you're supposed to be writing books or you're supposed to be whatever that thing is. Is. And it's not that circumstances fault, Dr. Thea, that you're still over here in this size seven shoe when you know you've grown to be a fully grown woman with a backbone who has purpose and destiny over her life over here trying to play small. Let me talk soft because we're talking about a line and whispering to the still small voice, right? I'm just, I just want us to know, but the only way to know how to move and when to move is because we're listening. Somebody said, I don't want to miss one word he said.
inks, y'all. I don't want to find myself falling out with folk because I've grown, but I'm irritated with situations. I don't want to find myself disheveled. So there has to be these, this, this lean into God that says, I don't want to miss. Huh. Somebody say, oh God. Somebody say it with me. Oh God, I don't want to miss. I don't want to miss one word. He speaks. I got too much riding on it. Somebody say that with me. I got too much riding on it. And see what happens is when we're not aligned, y'all, then we start taking on behaviors and we start taking on dispositions and ways of being that don't please the Lord. And we will find ourselves reaping the consequences of that. Listen, when we were right, we were right the whole time. Your observation that you were not being utilized is right. Your observation that you were being underpaid is right. Your observation that that wasn't, a, that wasn't cool how they said or did that. You're right. You're right. But you're also being in consequences and being rebuked and being because you're out of order. <laughs> because you're out of place. God, I don't want to miss one word you speak because at the end of the day, you're not going to hold me accountable for them or that, that adversity. You're going to hold me accountable. So some of us are being provoked by certain situations and it is aligned for you because the and that circumstance, that adversity is supposed to provoke you to go ahead and be who God called you to be. Somebody say, oh God, oh God, oh God. That aligned adversity is supposed to provoke you to go ahead and be who God called you to be. I'm going to wrap up with this. But then there is aligned assess, acceptance. Sarah, put that in there for me again, sis. Honey, I love this. Like I like that dynamic of us. Honey, y'all in Navasota, in, in Houston, in Florida, Dr. D is saying yes. Uh, hey, my glory, I didn't get to hug you, but I saw you. De Kim is in Dallas. Y'all see how we get to come together and have this Bible study? Eventually, I want to see if y'all want to get up early and put on a little bit of lipstick, and then we get to come on a Zoom or something and see one another and really connect. Is this blessing anybody on this morning? Somebody say aligned, aligned. Oh, God, I don't want to miss you. I don't want to miss what you're saying. Aligned assessment. Listen here, y'all. Take this in good heart. In the same way that God has assigned aligned adversity to our lives, Athea, assigned it from the perspective of he could have stopped it, but he didn't. He allowed it to come because it is supposed to push us to destiny. That same God, y'all received this on this morning because he loves us and he holds us close. He has aligned acceptance for you as well. See, some of us have been struggling for a long time to be accepted and it's being accepted by the wrong folk. Honey, we trying to pull up a seat to the table and the folk don't even want you at the table darkest. Get this, God has already gone before you, Dia. God has gone before you, Kim. God has gone before you, Sister Jackie. God has gone before you, women who will get on here later. God has gone before you, Jasmine. God has already gone before you, y'all. He has gone before you and he has put acceptance spaces on your path that are, are, are specifically cultivated for your destiny. God has gone before you and he has put that aligned acceptance, that mentor who's going to receive you into their arms, that safe space in a friendship that's going to hold you close, that prayer partner who's going to unite in faith with what you're believing God for, that mentee that you're supposed to bring up, those finances that you need for your next step, that partnership that you need, that collaboration. Like God has aligned acceptance in your path. And so what I want you to understand and accept today Gloria is that some striving that we that we go through trying to fit trying to make it work receive rest on today y'all hear me everybody y'all know I want this breathe in with me y'all breathe in with me receive rest on today receive rest receive rest from striving to fit receive rest from trying to explain y'all that has been something for me Receive rest from trying to explain your intentions, your heart. Receive rest from all of that. And trust that the folk that God has aligned to receive you in the fullness of who you are, your full self, he's already put them on your path. He's already put them on your path. Your advice, your adversity that is separating you from some things is only making space 
for what he has put on your path that is for your acceptance, that is for your embracement, that is for your full, like, y'all get it, right? Y'all with me? God is doing both in this season. God is doing both. He has aligned adversity for us. Those things, Lorena, that are going to come and provoke you to rise up and be who you were always destined to be. And he has acceptance for us. Those spaces, those people, those relationships that he's already put in our path that are aligned to help us receive it. So here's the thing all the way back to alignment. So then what do I say? We got to lean in. And I'll say what I keep saying and y'all say it with me because I don't want to miss one word you speak. There are people that you're going to tell me, gee, that season is over. Not that that person is over. You can pray for them, but you got to interact with them differently because that right there, that that space that's over for your life this over here i know you feel like you they're too far ahead of where you are but listen i want you in that space over there because it challenges you to think different to dress different to talk different honey go it makes you go get your sat vocabulary book and get back into your words again it makes you study it makes you read articles it challenges you it causes you to rise up even this was a shift. I like I like kind of that 8.30 at the nighttime thing where I'm kind of then Laura's like, no, 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 during this morning, you're going to sacrifice. Get on up, align differently, y'all. Lean in differently. Somebody like Dora could say, I'm leaning in. Anybody leaning in? I'm leaning in. Oh, God. Oh, God. Aligned adversity. Aligned assessment. Assess acceptance. So what will that look like this week? Y'all navigate, y'all for real. With the backdrop that the Lord is speaking. When you see, hear him prompt you to maybe speak up, do so. Engage differently, not knowing how God will work those dynamics out to open doors to your destiny. But this is what I know. During these, this week, adversity is going to come. During this week, acceptance is going to come. And it may not come from where you expect it. But because you already have this backdrop for this day and you have this backdrop for this week, rest in it. Rest in knowing that God is showing, strengthening, and separating both through adversity and acceptance to get you to your destiny. As you navigate people this week in your home, in your workplace, in your church, in your family, in your conversations, be listening for that still small voice. Like, God, is this a connector for my future? God, did you just tell me, quit putting all my energy over there, sit down and hush, because that right there is going to be drama for the next 10 years, and I'm trying to get to destiny while they're trying to get to drama. Like, navigate your relationships this week, listening to the Lord. We don't want to miss one word he speaks. Y'all understand? Y'all know I love y'all. Y'all know I love y'all. I love y'all. And I want to see all of us walk into what God has for us. So yeah. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Somebody just said it with me. Oh God. Hands lifted in your own space. Oh God. Oh God. Right there, glory in your own house. Sister Pelham. Oh God. I invited us earlier to envision and let things just run through our mind. And when it shows up for us, if it's, if, if it's overwhelming, if it's anxiety, if it's passion, if it's, if it's, I need just, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. As we get ready to go, because I gotta go meet my my <laughs> Jen, I gotta go meet my accountability party to work out at the gym who's on here. Listen, y'all, this is how we're gonna wrap up today. Huh. This is how we're going to wrap up today. Everybody, y'all, this is us holding hands and getting ready to pray. Because I know this stuff isn't easy. I know the heaviness of it because I'm walking with you, Lorena. I'm walking with you. Y'all, I have I have circumstances that but for a few people, I don't even tell people about it. We're all in this together, y'all. This pandemic, all this stuff, it's impacting all of our lives. And I got some oh God situations. I got some oh God situations. Listen. Find you a queen friend on this line on this morning. Everybody, find a queen friend, whether you're active now or you do the replay. And you go under that queen friend, that sis, whoever the Lord's name puts on your heart, you get right at that reply button. 
and you simply say this today to them, I'm including you in my own oh God. We said earlier that my oh God is just a way of saying, Father, I got so many words I want to say to you in prayer. I can't even say them all. I can't even articulate the depth of what I need you to do. So on today, I'm just saying, oh God. So y'all, if all of us pat somebody in our oh God, well, we are navigating circumstances and situations that we don't feel like we can carry for ourselves, we'll know there's another sister who's packing me. And if you're anything like me, sometimes it's easier for me to put my faith on somebody else's circumstances. I can believe harder for them than I can believe for myself. So on today, y'all, let's, let's include another sis in our oh God. So you find a name on here and you just say, Mary, today, I got you in my oh God. Dr. Thea, today I have you in my old God. Sonia, Renee, today I have you in my old God. Vivian, hey, colleague, I got you in my old God. I got you in my old God. Somebody get under somebody's name and just tell them, I got you in my old God. I have you in my old God. I'm including you, Gayla, in my old God. Vivian, I got you. Monique, you're in my old God. I got you, Kim, in my old God. Renee, I'm packing you in my old oh God. And all week long, when you can't find the complicated stuff to say, you just say, oh God. And remember another queen. I got to go, y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all so, so very much. I'm believing God. Gwen Riley, I got you in my old oh God. I got culinary arts in my own oh God. I've watched your stuff, Gwen, and I hit it, but I want you to know I'm praying for you. Jackie, I got you in my old oh God. Sharice, I got you in my old oh God. Dark as you already know, but I got you in my old oh God. When I cry out this week, when I don't have enough words to say, Laura, when I say, oh God, it includes all of you. Gayla, you already know, I got you in my old oh God. I am believing God to do some things, y'all, that when we have something at the end of the year, we're testifying about it, Jim Lee. Yeah, we'll be saying, oh my God. <laughs> my old oh God is going to shift to a, oh my God in Jesus' name. If you receive that, say amen. Y'all, I love you, Sarah. I got you in my old oh God. I gotta go, y'all, right? I love y'all. I'm believing, uh, Gwen, that by the end of all of this gala, our old gods will shift to an oh my God because he did it. He came through. I love y'all. Y'all know y'all can continue to interact on the live. I just got to be get on off of here, okay? I'm packing you, Dia, in my old God. Y'all, we love y'all. Shauna, got you in my old God. Those of you who are joining now, go back and listen to the replay. We're going to keep starting off at the top of the mornings for a while so that we know how to navigate our day, navigate our weeks. This week, as we go through uh, relationships, don't be shocked by adversity and don't be shocked by acceptance. Know that God is pushing us for our destiny, to our destiny, and we're going to be all that he has for us to be, okay? As always, I honor the greatness that's on the inside of you. Jim, give me five. All right, I'll see you soon. Love y'all. Have a wonderful day.